What's up you guys, it's Cody Cohen back at you with another video and literally right now, just right now as I'm making this video, we just finished officially moving into the house. We still had some stuff left over at the apartment. As you can see here behind me, we finally have the Harley here. I literally just brought the Harley home. It was in the garage at the apartment. I just parked it right there because uh, I thought it looked pretty dang good next to the truck in this driveway. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm pretty happy. I mean, uh, nice ass 7.3 build, nice Harley. All right here in my own driveway in front of my own two car garage, which is still a mess because we're still technically unpacking and finishing moving in. But I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, like I said, we just brought the Harley home right now. Um, let's get into what the video is gonna be about. So today we will be painting the intercooler pipes and the turbo spider. This candy blue, kind of mentioned this in the last video. Now, originally I was just gonna do the intercooler pipes, but I was kind of looking under the hood at what's gonna go into this job, and I decided it's not that much more work to take off the Turbo Spider, so we're gonna paint the Turbo Spider as well. Uh, again, like I said in the last video, we're not gonna do the Turbo right now, because I will probably be, or planning on eventually upgrading the Turbo to a KC300 Turbo, so I'm not gonna paint the factory Turbo right now if we're just gonna upgrade it soon anyways. So we're just gonna do intercooler pipes and the Spider. Also, I knew that Joe over at Living on Wheels had painted his intercooler pipes as well. For some reason, I thought that he did red. I don't know why. I don't know who I'm thinking of that painted their intercooler pipes red, but I thought that Joe painted his intercooler pipes red, so that's why I'm going with the blue. And I just now, I double checked and re realized that he did blue as well, so hopefully uh, it doesn't look like I'm copying too much. I guess I kind of accidentally am copying him on doing the blue and the cool pipes, but hopefully he doesn't mind, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start taking this thing apart and uh, get ready to paint. Now removing your intercooler pipes is pretty easy. First thing you're gonna do is remove your intake. If you have an intake with the enclosed box, a cold air intake, I'm not exactly sure. It's gonna be maybe a different process, maybe, maybe not. For their, my style, I just have to take this clamp off so I could take this whole piece off. Loosen the two clamps for the boot on the one there and one down there. And this intercooler pipe pretty much just slips out. And then for this one, kind of similar, loosen that clamp, loosen the clamp, down there, probably can't get you a view, but obviously you should be able to find the other side. And then I think the only thing that we're gonna have to remove to get out of the way is this line, which is pretty easy, a pair of channel locks and uh, loosening this clamp and pulling this hose off will get that line out of the way. And then this intercooler pipe should have come out pretty easily after that. All right, so both intercooler pipes are out, and as you can see from the video, it's not that hard at all to get those intercooler pipes out. Not too much to it. Now the Turbo Spider, it's a little more intricate. There's a little more to it. I had done it once before. Last time I did it, I unplugged this and took the green line out. The red line's already disconnected. It's, it doesn't stay in there anyways, but I took the green line out, line out unplugged this. This time, especially since we're gonna clean up and paint it, I'm gonna take the whole thing out with this bolt. So I'm gonna take that off and then you take off that band right there from the turbo. And then something I did not do last time, but I learned, I think I learned this recently in a video from Diesel Tech Ron. Last time I took off the top clamp on both of these boots on the bottom of the spider and took it off. I learned from Diesel Tech Ron's video that if you take the top clamp 
off of one of the boots and the bottom clamp off the other. So when you pull this out, you're actually gonna have one of the boots stay on it and the other boot will be left behind that it's actually much easier to install that way. So obviously when I take this thing all the way out and we paint it, we're gonna take the boot completely off. But when we go to reinstall it, one of those bottom boots will be on and one bottom boot will not be on the spider and it'll be on the truck. We're gonna see how that works. Apparently it makes it much easier to install. I was able to get it last time by taking this out of both boots, but we'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and uh, take this thing out. All right guys, so our turbo spider is out and our intercooler pipes are out. So if you're kind of nervous about doing this, if you're not real experienced and this is making you nervous, one thing you could do, which I will probably do, is you could take pictures. Like I'm gonna take a picture of this. I probably won't take a picture because it's right here in this video, but you can take a picture so you see where everything goes. And you know, those you don't really need to take a picture unless like I have that boot there. But you know what? I mean, everything can really only go back in one way. But if it makes you feel better, more comfortable, take pictures and then you'll know exactly where everything else goes. And as you can see, we have a lot of cleaning to do before I put any paint on any of this. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it and start cleaning this stuff up. All right guys, so we have everything pretty much cleaned off and ready for paint. Of course, I still need to tape up the ends and I'll put some rags inside the ends and tape them up and stuff so no paint gets on the inside. But the oil is all off and they're nice and clean. You'll see some like discoloration here. It's not oil, we got all the oil off. That's just like discoloration in the paint from these pipes being rubbed. Especially if you guys remember my video where I took the insulation off of this pipe. This piece right here was rubbing on a piece of the power steering pump, which rubbed a hole in it. You might have some rubbing there. You might even have a hole in it like mine, but they're pretty much clean and ready for paint. This is the stuff I used. Obviously we use lots of uh, shop rags. Acetone helped a lot putting acetone on the rags, spraying it with carb cleaner and brake cleaner. I used O'Reilly's brake cleaner. I had some uh, carb cleaner I used as well. Kind of works the same as the brake cleaner. And then we're gonna clean all of our boots off before putting them back on as well. So let's go ahead and get these things taped up and uh, start painting them. All right guys, so we're pretty much ready to paint. I have everything clean, everything's taped off. It's all hanging on this piece of pipe. We have our paint ready, obviously. We shake, shook the can a lot. Now, by going through the reviews, what I read a lot was that you really wanna do a lot of light coats. So you don't wanna put a heavy coat on this. You wanna to do tons and tons of light coats with a minute or two in between coats. 
and just let those light coats build up. So that's what we're gonna do. Try and take our time and be patient, which I have a hard time doing, but we're gonna try our best. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right guys, we're all done painting. Now the spider came out really good. I'm really happy with how it came out. It looks great. Uh, this is kind of a transparent paint. So like the discoloration, you guys might not be able to tell on camera, but the discoloration in the metal that was on here is still kind of somewhat visible. I'm not too worried about it. It looks good. I did use both cans of paint completely. If I had a third can, I could probably get them completely covered, or I would recommend putting some type of base coat down first that's gonna get rid of all the discoloration, make them one solid clean color, and then add your candy blue. I didn't do that, but again, I'm not too worried about it. They came out really good. I mean, you can't really tell that much unless you look at it up close. And when it's in the engine bay, it's gonna look great. Not worried about it, so let's go ahead and take them down. Uh, I cleaned up the boots already. I got all of the oil residue off of them. They're ready to go back on, so we're pretty much ready for the install. Let's get these, get these things on and see how they look under the hood. The pipes all done and installed all painted spiders painted everything's on all the boots are tight obviously we still need to put our intake back on but that's easy i'll do that after i wanted to show you guys everything show you the piping in there man that looks good a couple important things i want to tell you guys before we end the video of course i will go for a drive i'm gonna get on it pretty good get the turbo boost up pretty good make sure that all the boots are nice and tight and holding correctly nothing uh None of the intercoolers pop off or anything like that, but that's it, you guys, right there. Let me show you guys a full view. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. Our air intake here, delete plug, was already blue. It had a little, that little silver threaded plug on it. I just painted that too, so that was already blue. And it kind of just matches everything. The alternator, nice blue. So everything looks good in here, in my opinion, with that blue. Obviously, we need to do an actual engine bay cleaning and get everything real cleaned up. But I think that blue looks pretty good in there, if you ask me. Now, a couple of important things to note about this job, you guys, if you're interested in doing this, a couple of important things you should know. First of all, these pipes do not just go right into place nicely and just slip right in all nice and just go in with no problem. They're kind of tight, they're kind of tough, there's a lot of things in the way, and they rub. And it's actually probably pretty likely that you're gonna scratch the paint. I did scratch it in one spot uh, in that back elbow right there. So I definitely recommend keeping some leftover paint 
do not use 100% of it because when you go to install these, you're gonna wanna do some touch-ups. So I already had to spray, uh, I think two spots for sure, one back there, and then I think another one uh, on here somewhere down there. So make sure you keep some touch-up spray for that because these pipes do not just slip right in without scratching, at least for me, I had a couple scratches. Now, like I said, we're gonna go for a drive and make sure that all the boots are solid and tight and everything. Uh, in the meantime, let's hit the remote start and we can see from up here if anything comes off right from the start and then we'll go hit some uh, high PSI and hit some, uh, get some good boost going. So let's start it up. Good, so the startup went good. Let's uh, see how it does under some high uh, high boost. So we're driving now. We've already put a few PSI uh, boost on the turbo. I got up to like three, four, five PSI already. But now we're gonna go over this hill and I can get up to about, sorry, camera, I don't think the camera's on me. But we're gonna go over this hill right now and I can get my turbo up to about 25 PSI. Uh, that's about what I max out at, so we're at eight right now, no problem. Now the last time I took one of the intercooler pipes off was when I went to do the foil delete. And when I did the foil delete, we found that hole in my intercooler pipe that was from rubbing on the power steering pump. So when I replaced it with the new intercooler pipe, I didn't put the bottom boot on correctly. And when I got the, the boost to be pretty high, it actually popped off. Now luckily I brought my tools with me for that exact reason, just in case. And I was able to jump out of the truck and just loosen the clamp and put it back on and it was never a problem again since. So that's why we're doing the test drive right now. Uh, we'll get the boost up pretty high and see if any of those boots pop off because it did happen to me once before, but I also have a better understanding of kind of what I'm doing now. So I'm pretty sure I put all the boots on correctly and tightened them down good. Shouldn't happen, but we're about to hit this hill right now. Let's get some uh, serious boost going. By the way, real quick while we're in the shade, let me show you guys on the gauge because when I'm in the sun and I do this, it's gonna be kind of hard to see the gauge. But these are our numbers right here. This is our engine oil temperature and this is our boost, okay? So watch out for this number. It's gonna be kind of hard to see with the sun. Like I said, once we start driving, there's gonna be kind of a glare, but you can kind of see it right here. Uh, we should get up to about 25 PSI, but just wanted to give you guys that heads up because uh, I do know it might be kind of hard to see, especially because we're gonna be shaky as well, but let's go ahead and uh, get on it. As you can see, we got our turbo boost pretty high. We went up to 25 PSI, had no problems. None of the boots came off, none of the air cooler pipes came, came loose. Everything's good in there, job is done. Uh, hope you guys like how it looked. I really like how that blue looks under there. Uh, fun little project, many more to come of course. Now that we're in the new house, we can do a lot more work to the truck. So stay tuned for future projects. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already subscribed. Hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload future content. Check out nohuffassapparel.com and I'll catch you guys on the next video.